Guys, it's been a long time coming, but I'm proud to announce that my hands are finally registered with the International Registry of Lethal Hands. This is the only place where your God-given gifts of danger can get the recognition that they truly deserve. Now you might be thinking, why on earth would anybody need to register their hands as lethal? Let me break it down for you. There are those among us whose hands are so downright dangerous, they need to be documented. Registration is a moral responsibility and it's a vote for the greater good of humanity. The sole mission of the International Registry for Lethal Hands is to catalog the most formidable hands on the planet. So if you know someone and you even suspect they possess lethal hands, do not hesitate. Register them immediately. And if you've ever looked at your own hands and thought, damn, these dogs are dangerous, don't settle. Go register. Head over to registeryourhands.com, fill out a simple form, and you're official. Remember, use the promo code jail to save 20% or just click on the link below. Success is something people have to be reminded of often. Now, that is an adage that I remember. I got that on a fortune cookie when I was in junior high after a meal with my family at a place called Lee's Kitchen in 12th, and I've never forgotten it. I've never forgotten that because in sport, we see it so often, right? How many times, I'm very guilty of this. That's the greatest fight I've ever seen. That's the best fighter I've ever seen. A week later, maybe a month. I'll make that statement again. It'll be about somebody else. Now, in this sport, we're not wrong to do that. Like, this sport has grown. I mean, it started as infancy. You could go a month to month and see somebody better. The guy you said in December is the best ever. In February, there could be a new guy. But the point still exists, doesn't it? And athletes don't want it to be true. Athletes will get their feelings hurt. They'll go out and they'll do something. They'll have success. And then the public will say, well, yeah, sure, but you couldn't do that against so-and-so. Or, yeah, you beat that guy. That guy sucks. Like, the very next day, the day before, this is the greatest guy. After you beat him, that guy sucks. And it hurts the athlete's feelings. And the athlete will even speak about it. But that's because the athlete doesn't understand. Without that component, without an ever-changing mind and cycle, we don't have an industry. We not only want to do something, we want to do something that we can duplicate and do it again in a month. In a week. But we got to be able to repeat it for it to be sustainable. And I only bring that element because Kamara Usman, who is the only athlete in the history of 170 pounders that you could say was better than George St. Pierre and not have people laugh at you. You would be wrong to say it, but you could say it and you wouldn't be laughed at. He was the best of his time by such a glaringly obvious gap. Not only did Usman beat everybody, he beat him again. And not only did he beat him and beat him again, it wasn't that hard. It really wasn't that hard. Usman's awesome. And Usman came out and he was speaking about his experience at 185 pounds, his experience opposite Chemayev. And one of the things that was a component in that, that I felt going into the fight was going to favor Usman, but was the fact that it was three rounds. Like Usman is an endurance athlete. He will break you. He will beat you just on his ability to go harder, longer than you can. Which in many sports, that's never tested. In baseball, that will never be tested. Who's in better shape, things like that? You, you, you would never know. You can't weaponize it. But you can in our sport. Usman did. So the fact that he was going to go three rounds, I thought, man, this is going to be great. He's going to have it in pace for 15 minutes like we've never seen. Well, Usman just weighed in on that. He said, you know what? I did have that pace. I did have that energy. But I didn't know how to use it. I didn't know that I was going to be in such good shape. I didn't know that when the end of the fight came, I was going to have so much left. He said, I thought about dropping down and doing push-ups just to show the world how great I feel. I believe him. I believe everything he said. I believe he could have won that fight. I believe he could beat anybody in the world at that weight class. I believe all of those things. That fight was in October. I'm all high on, I'm drunk on Usman excitement right now. But that's because Usman did an interview that I saw today. That fight was in October. I needed reminded. 
Success is something people have to be reminded of often. I need a reminded. Why am I just hearing about this from Usman? And when I look at Kamar Usman, I have to always wonder, is he retired? Always. Because I follow the golden rule of life, which is to put yourself in somebody else's shoes. How would you act if you were in their shoes? If I had Usman's level of success, I imagine I'd be out of here. I imagine. I think. But not only is he not out of here, he's not even talking about title shots. He's talking about a run. He's talking about coming back. He's talking about, I will get in there with those top guys, no matter how old they are, whatever the situation, how big their name is, wherever the placement on the card. And he's looking at doing that at two different weight classes between 170 and 185. I think that's a lot of fun as a fan, by the way. But we are going to need that answer from Usman. Usman said, if I want to be the welterweight champion of the world again, I'll go be the welterweight champion of the world again. I believe him. But I want to hear more of it. I want to hear it more often. And you know what else I want? I want to know what weight class he's going to go. That's fun for me. That's fun to bounce around back and forth. But once that starts to die down, we got to lock in. And Usman's going to have to go first. Usman's one of these guys, if you ever meet him, you're not going to be meeting what you think you're going to be meeting. Like a, a successful, handsome, charming young man, that's not who he sees when he looks in the mirror. He doesn't know how great he is. It's one of the secrets to his greatest, but he doesn't know. And the reason I tell you that, no one's going to call him out. And I do mean no one. He has spread himself over two different weight classes of 170 and 185. And if you can get on the docket opposite him, that's what the kids call a money fight. You're going to have a beautiful placement. If you're not a main eventer and or a co-main eventer, get on a docket opposite Usman. Now you are. And they're still not going to call him out. That's not going to change. Usman's going to have to go first. He's going to have to tell his why. He's going to have to say what weight class and why. And that's something he had such an advantage of when he fought Chimaev because we knew. The why, it was the number one contender's fight. Short notice, different content, brand new weight class, but all the stakes. A number one contendership to draw into a champion who, by the way, Usman had beaten in the past. Like, the story was right. It was perfect. Perfect. But Usman needs to tell it, and he's too humble. He needs to stop with that. He needs to be more arrogant. He needs to be more aggressive. He needs to be more assertive. Usman doesn't want to be a poor sport. Well, guess what, Kamar? You're not. Because if you call somebody out and they get the fight, that's a celebration for them. They are now a meaningful player. They are now likely in a number one contenders match. At worst, they are now a co-main eventer or better. It's not disrespectful to the younger guys, right? The younger guys, they look up to Kamar. It's one of those things. He's a veteran. He's a leader. Well, it's time to lead in this situation, too. So lead us, Kamar. Tell us. Let's start with what weight class. And when you tell us the weight class, give us an idea of who you're looking at. I promise, whatever answer you come to us with, we're going to like it. But we are getting a little annoyed with waiting. <laughs>